salty Seahawks could wreak havoc in the postseason. Seattle two games into the season, the Seattle Seahawks were winless, and for as much as they were seeking a victory, they were also in search of an identity. On a team loaded with youth, it took veterans such as linebacker Bobby Wagner and offensive tackle Dwayne Brown to remind their young teammates that figuring out who you are takes longer than two weeks. Judging by the Seahawks' 21-7 win over the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night, it took something closer to 14 weeks. Once Seattle finally discovered who it is, it was hard to deny that what's old looks new again. Great, hard-nosed defense, running the ball as an offense, a very physical group, that's what we tried to create over the season, and we've been able to accomplish that, Brown said. Tonight was a prime example of that. It was just a grind it out, not very flashy game. Sound familiar? It should. These Seahawks aren't the same group that lorded over the NFC in recent years, something Wagner has taken upon himself to hammer home to his teammates. They are, however, following a similar blueprint that has long been a tried and true formula for postseason success. This win was undoubtedly ugly, with yards hard to come by and points even more scarce. That's exactly what should concern Seattle's potential playoff opponents. Mathematically, the Seahawks have not yet clinched a playoff berth. But barring something catastrophic, the Seahawks will be playing in the games that matter most come January. At 8-5, Seattle's chances of reaching the postseason jump to 99.6%, according to ESPN's Football Power Index calculations. In this, the era of golden-armed quarterbacks and scoreboard-busting offense, there's still some room for good defense and a power-running game. The Chicago Bears showed it Sunday night against the Los Angeles Rams, and the Seahawks doubled down Monday against the Vikings. For much of this season, the Seahawks' defense hasn't looked dominant. But if the group that showed up Monday night can build on shutting down the Vikings, it will be exactly the type of salty outfit that can wreak havoc in the postseason. The Seahawks had plenty of fun pushing the Vikings around, limiting them to 276 yards and 4.9 yards per play. At the heart of that success? A defensive wrinkle the Seahawks call Bandit, which deployed seven defensive backs as a means to change things up and cover Minnesota's multiple receiving threats. Whatever the package, it worked against Minnesota. It took the Vikings seven possessions to reach Seattle territory, they didn't get to the red zone until the early stages of the fourth quarter, and they didn't score until the game was out of reach with 1-10 to go. Seahawks cornerback Justin Coleman put the cherry on top of a dominant defensive performance with a fumble recovery for a touchdown with less than three minutes to go. It was the second week in a row that the Seahawks scored a defensive touchdown. According to ESPN stats and information, it was the first time since Week 17 of 2014 and Week 1 of 2015 that the Seahawks accomplished the feat. The last time they did that within a regular season? During their Super Bowl championship season in 2013.